if I hired you, what is your plan? I see a few things changing. Less mergers and acquisitions. More charitable donations. Receiving pats on the back, yes, but most importantly, giving them. Accounts, 401k, Linda. nickname, luggage, saving the wildlife, retiring on top, letting boredom get the best of me, and then returning triumphantly. It smells like we're done here. Linda! Okay, this is going to be a test stream for my work on our very own game. I was just testing the audio and got that annoying Old Spice commercial. So, what we're doing here is this is a, an actual historical fort which uh, no longer exists, it was replaced by a newer one but it's one of the scenarios, one of the main uh, locales for one of our game uh, maps, if you want to call them that. Uh, what we're doing is, I've been working on this model um, for some time, quite some time right now, and I'm going to get it ready to be imported in a game. So, as you can see here, uh, we're using 3D Studio. So, First thing is we need to change these these polygons into quads. I think this is grouped. So we just select this press backspace so we don't have those um, annoying triangles there which are harder to work with so let's just work with the the main wall, the main perimeter wall and we will go around I should be doing this up here. Now ideally we we'll want to make this model um, ready to be semi-destructible or to be you know able to segment it in different pieces. But let's get the overall shape worked out first. Now, this is um, a relatively low poly model, and as you can see, it's already causing uh, weird um, shadow effects. So, what we're doing here is um, making these segments clear. So, if we apply any any functions that are going to potentially add more polys, you won't get uh, weird vertices in the middle. For example, here this is a sally port. We're going to have to segment off vertically here.
so in general we want a cleaner model and we don't want <coughs> as many polygons as we do want uh, quads Be a little harder here. But I'm gonna have to reshape those areas. And we'll decide about this later on. Okay, the overall, uh, the ramparts and I mean the courtyard walls and the bastions are mostly clean out. Now let's proceed with some of the interior faces. Some of them. Okay, this shows we need to correct that low rest texture also. But one thing at a time. Also, gonna have to eliminate a bunch of uh, vertexes like these ones. That are just uh, extra. So, all in all, it's going to be. Um, a complete walk through the, the entire fortification and then removing those hmm. something weird about this one Interesting. Huh. Okay, it seems to be open. Let's continue with the ones that we can remove and then we'll troubleshoot that later. I think it's going to be easier if we just use this uh, first person camera. thing is that we can actually use the WASD keys as in any other first person shooter game okay 
I say we do the exterior. And then we move on. Okay, let's it's time to do the back wall, the one that looks into the main courtyard. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this uh, type of fortification, this is a star fort, which is uh, the way uh, defensive works were done in the Age of Gunpowder. That is, all the way since the, the Renaissance, all the way up to the 19th century. And it relies heavily on geometry and the design layout to overlap fields of fire. That's why you don't see any any towers. Uh, unlike in the medieval fortifications, we relied on height as an obstacle. So this one is trying to maximize overlapping fields of fire for uh, the cannons to cross fire on the enemy. And it's low and thick because it's meant to withstand uh, both uh, solid and mortar fire. I mean direct and indirect fire. Okay, apparently there are some splines, some lines here that I cannot remove for some reason. Let's see if might be because they're not welded, because they're independent the faces huh interesting just like this one let's see if we can remove the inner one yes we can So after we do all this, we can apply um, modifiers like chamfer to make the the edges less rough. This is a major chore. But eventually it's going to be fruitful. We're going to have a nice looking uh, scenario for our players to you know, move around, jump, shoot their cannons and muskets and all that. Whoops. Let's see what we're looking at. Yes. those extra vertexes. Now this bunch of extra lines and vertexes are a product of using the boolean uh, function which we have to say in 3D Studio Max is not the best thing. But I didn't know that at the time so we're stuck with this extra work. there are some vertexes that are still needed uh, we won't 
be able to get rid of until we remove the lines and the lines refuse to be removed. So the procedure is remove the line and then the vertex. Like in this case here, Apparently that sally port is fine. It's not a sally port, it's actually a a gate to one of the inner uh, vaults. Let's see what this lead us. This is the one that is right next to the, the water cistern. And chances are there was, was a, a gunpowder magazine, I would have to check the Oh, sorry, this is the sally port, and next to it, it should be like a corps uh, de garde for, um, you know, the the soldiers on watch. Usually, when you see in these type of fortifications, uh, sometimes the magazines were located inside of the bastions, which are the the stronger, uh, the better armored portions of the of the building. That's the line that I can remove. Let's see about this one. Okay, this vertex can be removed. This one too. So is this one. If we remove this one, then we messed up this face. It's not letting us. It's so weird. Should be able to. Let's see. Huh. By all means, we should be able to. Weird. Let's continue cleaning out the vaults. Like I said before, this is the product of a boolean function, which is you create the volume that you what that you try to subtract. So you create a, like a solid object that has the shape of the vault, and then you intersect them with the the curtain wall, and then you apply boolean and it subtract, you kind of like excavating the one object out of the other. It seems neat, I mean, it seems, you know, fairly easy to do, but you end up working more, just having to correct all of the extra intersections. Okay, let's do the whole first person thing. Okay, this is the sally port. Um, going to get these lines, these lines, everything that turns a uh, quad into two triangles, we're going to remove. Then we can create uh, better intersections. Mm, this should be fine, I guess. Let's try to do the same here.
just you know clearing our minds from <clears throat> not thinking that this could be repetitive okay now in this one we have a double bolt which I think I could let's see change field of view That's a bit better. Oops. Bolt. Oh yeah, this is the <coughs> the corpse, the guard, right here, right next to the sally port. And here you can see, yeah, this is a uh, an interesting feature. Sorry, this is the main gate, and you see the space from which the the drawbridge. I mean, for the chains of the drawbridge. Let's clean it out, and then I'll show you the the full extent of of the system hmm. what did I remove there? okay that seems to be fine okay another one of those extra line, extra line here So this type of arrangement, huh, it looks like we missed this. This type of uh, fortification you find all around the Americas. It's uh, the typical four bastion, you know, four point um, fortification, several sizes. They could be even way smaller than this one. This is quite large. You find them all the way from Chile to Canada. It was uh, by the treaties of the time. It was considered not to be uh, an ideal fortification, but due to time constraints and funds constraints, uh, it ended up being like the most uh, popular kind. There was one that is was even smaller, which was triangular, which was considered to be a redoubt, and it was even labeled as imperfect at the time, but. It ended up participating in a lot of campaigns, especially in the 18th century. I think I should have removed that one. Let's keep those for the time being. Get rid of these two. So okay, let's let's check out the entire thing. Remove the edge faces, and this is what you would see with the drawbridge, which is quite interesting. Uh, at first, when I was uh, researching this model, I wasn't sure that this was the case, you know, because it has this neoclassic style um, gate design. 
and then it's just cut off in the middle. Um, I looked at, at the plans and that's what the plans showed and I was still you know dubious about it until I found several pictures of uh, different uh, fortifications like this and especially uh, some in Puerto Rico and they had this design and I've even seen one in Europe that is uh, caught right in the middle here so I guess um, it was a weird way of marrying the aesthetics of the neoclassic period um, you know 18th century uh, second half of the 18th century moving away from the Baroque and practicality because they do need it, the, they did need the, the drawbridge Let's see why we cannot remove this. Hmm. Let's try to weld. Okay, no idea why. So let's let's move on just removing the, the extra vertexes that we don't need. This is actually gonna lower the poly count and the also the vertex count. I mean it's by a margin but still That did something. Ah. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Well, bottom line is eventually we may need to retexture all this, so let's try to do some yeah, snap toggle. We'll move this vertex here. We'll weld them. Let's see if that allow us allows us to remove this. Still, hmm. it's really really weird. So okay, you see the separation here in the main uh, rampart, the main courtyard wall that segments the the area that the main gate it's um subtracted from, we need to do that for the rest of those gates. Okay, I'm really pleased with this uh, first uh, sweep that we did. Just to double check. Okay, we still need to do some of the vaults. This is an interesting one. As you can see, it's wider. And it 
has two of, of those doors. Okay, that's the one that we cannot remove. Huh, we could remove that one. Okay, that should be cleaner now. And again, this one. Some of them seem to be attached to something else that forbids you to remove them. Another interesting characteristic of this type of uh, fortification is that they do, they all of them needed at least one cistern. And this cistern, oh what? Is that face reversed? That's a missing face. We'll add that later. So, this is a double walled cistern. What they would do is that they would they would uh, collect rainwater and they would usually keep this at a level, never collecting from the bottom because you know all the sediment. And some of these uh, fortifications had a really intricate. Rain, rainwater collection system. Oops, and some of those still work today, and the cisterns are in perfectly uh, working order. to make better intersection faces. Oops. Thing is, uh, we're still trying to decide what to do with the cisterns in the game. Um, it would be fun to just let players fall into, but then I guess people would complain. No, we want to make like a like an insta kill trap in the fort that you're defending. So chances are we're just gonna just gonna cap the <coughs> the water access with uh, some kind of uh, wooden cover. interesting here so here you can see another feature of um, this type of fortification is that the esplanade which is this the one that looks into the field has a slope this is both for water collection but mainly because the guns need to recoil and it's easier I mean they do recoil when they fire and it's easier to move that back into firing position this way with that gentle slope so if it was a flat 
a flat area, then you will need to apply a lot of force. You will need like even more of the five people for with the five artillerymen that was required to operate a single gun back in the day. And they, in addition to that, they also had um, iron rings built here, closer to the parapet, with rope, so they would act as, as pulleys. They would push the gun and pull it with the ropes. Um, and, you know, also aided by the slope. Okay, what else we need to do? This is an unfinished structure here, another corpse de guard for the that oversees the entrance. Let's see another cool characteristic. Let's remove the edge faces. Is that this fort had a cloister in the center. And this cloister acted as well it had the courtyard in the in the middle and direct access to the ramps. And it was very similar to the ones that you find in monasteries. Which is still unfinished, we need to add all the rooms and all that with the furnishings and all the props for the soldiers to slip in. But overall it's a, a model that is I would say 90% complete and we're ju just trying to make it game ready. Okay, so this is the... I would assume this is the other... Let's see... Yes, this should be... the other set of cisterns is it? Or is it just have one? Yeah, this one has uh, two sets of double cisterns. So let's do this now. Need um, something that prevents us from clipping through the model. If I remember correctly, there was uh, an option to do that. Though I cannot remember exactly where to find it, though. Well, it's not a big deal. Let's just select all of the faces that we need to remove. Well, apparently we can't. Let's do them one by one. Check the underside. Okay, underneath the ramps to bring the cannons up to the ramparts. Oh, wrong line. Let's see about the yes bunch of to access. We're gonna have to do like a second, maybe third. Ah. 
third um, sweep to find more of those extra vertexes, but should be fine for now. Let's do the main courtyard, which is just this piece. It's not a big deal here. Let's check the parapet though, the parapet seems to be already clean. Yeah, it's pretty much well segmented. It's um again, um we're doing this to make the model ready if we wanna make it uh destructible in some areas. We're getting this weird um shadow stuff here and it's because let's see, yeah, we have those conflicting vertexes there. Should remove all this. Now, this fort had really, really large uh, garrets on on the capital angle of the bastions. I'll quickly show you there. As you can see here, they're fairly beefy. Um, you can ignore this uh, shadow error. It's uh, when you put it in an Unreal Engine, it doesn't come like that. It's just that apparently 3D Studio has uh, problems rendering uh, low poly models. Okay, let's continue cleaning here. Oh. Let's focus on this area. Okay, now how to fix this side? Shouldn't be that problematic, but at least just a shadow. I think uh, smoothing groups would fix that, so I'm not gonna touch it. In vertex wise, it's not a big deal. Also, here, I mean, if you look at the one that is on the opposite side, I doubt that you would find the same error. And it's, yeah, you see, it depends on the the way it calculates the shadows, because the light source is where I'm looking from right now. So all this side looks fine. It's the shadows on the other side that get messed up. Anyway, let's continue cleaning the edges. Sometimes should be healthy to add another vertex, sorry, another edge. There. Should double check the other one in case it needs to, to have that vertex there also. At least this looks way better. You don't see any shadow weirdness on the edges. Uh, 
I wonder if we should keep this one. the edge should be brought down from all of those uh, sock segments, the slices. this one already which is the one that needs the the outer edge it's gotta be one that we haven't done that for this one has it those previous two had them and this one has okay they're done so yeah, eventually I guess we, would, we can segment this parapet different portions so they can become destructible but all in due time. And one thing that uh, game developers should know is make no promises that you cannot fulfill. Okay, let's tackle the cloister. Still very early stage. The rest seems fine, even the details here. Okay, some of the tile, the roof tiles. The other ramp access. Oh, it's hollow on the bottom. Hmm. Well, we'll fix that. Well, I think all in all is fine. It's just ready to be worked in detail with the inner rooms and then adding all the props. the terrain we're not going to touch because this is going to be handled with the in-game, uh, sort of the in-engine terrain and as you can see here this is uh, we're going for the actual state of the fort when it was besieged in 1741 which it was an uncompleted state and as you can see the defenders try to uh, fill in that um, unfinished glassy as you can see the glass is, uh, is actually completed here it, that slope gently bends into the rest of the terrain while here it's just that short wall and then they try to add this palisade to protect this, uh, this bastion usually in these forts um, you wouldn't want to attack them in the ramparts between the two bastions because that was the strongest point you would get in the crossfire from the two bastions so what you would do is you would pick the outermost point in the fortification that will be the capital angle of each bastion and you would try to destroy this thing make it crumble then then this would create a ramp and the soldiers the the besiegers would um storm through it so in general that's why as a defender you want to reinforce this area 
That's why eventually the the modes, the giant modes, ended up covering like the the outer um, most uh, let's say wall of the of the moat would ended up cover almost up to the parapet. So the terrain was actually covering the the wall of the fort, and th that's why you would also find outer works like this thing. This like would be raveling here because if the maximum range of the of your guns if you look at it like this it's not gonna be able to cover you know you have guns firing from here and from here uh, you know providing covering fire for this weaker area but at some point there's gonna be a discrepancy between the range of the guns here the guns here and the guns here so the maximum range of these guns is going to allow for the enemy to be able to hit this outermost point. So what you would do if you want coverage from this weak point is you make another fortification here, usually a, a raveling, a triangular lower work that would be on the same level, the same like let's say if we draw a horizontal line here, would be on the same level as the bastion. So the bastion will be covered from these sides too. And you find this feature in uh, Fort, uh, especially two forts that are uh, in the U.S. Uh, Fort Ticonderoga and Castillo San Marcos in, in Florida. But this one, this one had a raveling at some point on the seaside, but it got integrated into the the outer classy. Oops. Okay, let's give you a better look at it. And yeah, the let's say almost mandatory point to place a ravelin will be here covering the entrance. You wouldn't want you know the enemy to be able to put direct fire on on the entrance and they just storm through it. You would want to force the enemy to actually make this wall crumble, you know, with solid shot, and that would take quite a while. So usually when you see a, a four point, four bastion fort, if it has a raveling, it's right here. Okay, let's save. Now I forget to save. Yes, as a final note, let's show you kind of like the final look that we want to achieve. Something along these lines. You see, this one has all the the modifiers applied to it. it looks smoother. The edges are not rough. looks more natural like it actually has uh, plastering on top of the you know this uh, yellowish stucco on top of the the bare uh, coralline um, limestone and this is an actual uh, archaeological plan of this battery shows in bold the remaining areas as of today 1998 which was when this archaeological survey was made and the missing areas I mean this is basically what was left of the battle after it was bombarded from the sea you know, the solid shot from the, the men of war actually ate up all of this thing, dismounted the guns and only the the service buildings uh, remained the gunpowder magazine and the kitchen it is a small battery but yeah, this is the the quality that we're aiming for, um, mesh-wise. Texture-wise, we're still going to have to add um, more of the um, high-res textures to it.
Well, that's been all for now. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, part of my work for our upcoming game, Field of Arms. Just stay tuned and feel free to ask any questions that you have.